Yeah, so this bluish teal, whatever it is, this is the balance, this middle okay. circle. Okay. You go all this kind of purpley below it. Oh, to here. Okay. So That's hyper. That okay. How about all this red above it? How would you say above your thalamus? Epithalamus. And those are the three parts of your diencephalon. On your thalamus, you're below, hypo, and you're above epi. So three things in your diencephalon. All in the center part of your brain. Back off a little bit. All in there. Hypo, thalamus, epi. What we're going to do is we're going to go through each one of those individually. I think I'll put them over here. Let's start with our thalamus. Thalamus does a lot of stuff for you. I'm going to show you a picture of the main, a main function it has. This is this one. This is showing a picture, which is not anatomic correct, right? So here's some, here's some tracks. They're coming past my medulla, past my pons, I'm in peduncle, so I have a big track. I hit my thalamus, bam. <laughs> And what is my thalamus doing? What are those arrows representing? Sending signals or radiating all that. Kind of. So my thalamus's job is to send all this wiring that's coming up my spine to different locations of my brain. So in the dark ages, when I was a lad, we called that the switchboard. As many of you don't even know what a landline phone is anymore. <laughs> You see, nice. I saw a Perry Mason once. Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, we'll call them a router. What does your email router do? Takes your email and does what with it? Sends it. Sends it places. That's exactly what your thalamus' job is to do. It's to sort and direct incoming signals. Its job is to figure out where all this information from your body should go. Which part of the brain should receive the message? So we used to call it the switchboard. Okay. So this job is to sort and direct traffic. So when you stub your toe, that information comes up, and this has to figure out where you send toe memos versus if you burn your hand. That has to go someplace else. So the alpha's <laughs> job is to router, switch, sort, pick a word. Make sense? It's a very important function. But then there's more. Thalamus also does some emotions. Talk about it a little later. And some feelings. Not emotion feelings, but touchy feely feelings, such as pain. Hmm. How do we know the thalamus would do pain? Didn't we just do a track? What was the name of that yeah. one track over here? Major track? No. Spino. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thalamic. Thalamic. That's last term you didn't know what that meant. But now you spinothalamic means I go to the thalamus to pick it up. So pain and temperature are things your thalamus interprets for you because of the spinothalamic track. So if you go up a spinothalamic, you end up in the thalamus. That's the logic of the name. So the names now, those tracks, will start making sense of the brain part you're learning. So spinal thalamic, I feel pain and temperature. That's what my thalamus is for. The major job is that switchboard idea. I was not okay on thalamus? Okay, so I'm going to do hypothalamus right here. Okay, in a nutshell, what's the hypothalamus for? Glad you asked. The big H. No, not other H. Oh, homeostasis. No. Your hypothalamus is the primary homeostasis place. So now, go back to last term and start reminding me of things that are homeostatic. Blood pH. What else is homeostasis responsible for? Body temperature. Oh, wait a minute. I thought temperature was my thalamus. 
Send a kiss. Very good. This is thalamus is where you feel hot or you feel cold. But this is where your body says, I want 98.6, how I regulate my temperature. There's other stuff that's homeostatic. Digestion. Digestion. Things like thirst and hunger. Uh, yeah, the electrolytes, blood sugar, all those things you learned last term, right? Blood sugar, electrolyte balance, thirst, hunger. Now we have some more so hormones. We'll learn this term. Things like sex. Those are all hypothalamic in origin. That's where your body's regulating homeostasis. What about having to urinate? I mean, you need to regulate that. Yeah, it's indirectly in there. It's one of the thirds in this one. Okay. So all your homeostatic mechanisms are basically hypothalamic in the origin. We'll learn that more this course. So thalamus, switchboard, and some feelings. Hypothalamus, homeostasis. Look at those. Okay, so now we're going to do the epithalamus over here. We're going to digress to another subject. So we're going to my epithalamus. Important function of the epithalamus is it makes CSF. Let's review last term. Can someone tell me what CSF was? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, your final letter. Cerebro, final. So one of the jobs under epithalamus is to make that fluid. Let's review how we make that fluid from last term. And there was a glial cell you learned, and you probably don't remember anything about, it dealt with that. <coughs> don't say only the Yes. 
So the vocabulary they made up of the table as well? Do they have them on the outside? They're wrapped by them. So let me show you this picture here. So here's a close-up now of a choroid plexus slash epithalamus slash CSF slash pick your word. So there's your choroid plexus. So here, this beautiful color is a capillary. I've never seen one that color. And then here's my ependymal cells. The ependymal cells are wrapped around the blood vessels, taking fluid out, forming the CSF. So that would happen in the epithalamus choroid plexus. Make sense? So while we're making this fluid, let's figure out why we're making the fluid. Why in the world make CSF? What are we doing? We're going to bathe the brain. Brain me baths. Let's figure out why in the world your body wants to keep the brain wet. I mean, why? Would it help the, uh, the, the, the electricity, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the messages from the nerves? It, it could, but not necessarily. No. You could do that even if with other things. Why would you want your brain nutrients? Okay, good. So this fluid enables you a way to give nutrients in the brain and spinal cord. You can use a CSF like a blood. Right? So I can take nutrients out of my blood and put it into my CSF to circulate. Here's my oxygen, glucose, and stuff. What else? Why else would you want fluid around a brain? Besides just some food. Cushion. Your brain is weightless if I'm floating in fluid. I've made the hydraulic system. Weight? So I can cushion the brain. Waste? Also get rid of the waste. And it protects it from harmful chemicals like That's it. Right. We're not gonna throw in the word you learned last term. Blood brain barrier. The blood brain barrier. Remember how your body wants to keep blood out of the brain. Why would your body want to keep blood out of the brain? A lot of blood. Yeah, that's toxic. Yeah, infection, all this stuff. So the CSF's job is to replace the blood part, that you're, the functions of the blood. So I keep the blood out, blood's over here, but I keep the things I want in the blood and get rid of through the CSF. By the way, Saladin will throw another word at you. He'll say the blood CSF barrier. So same thing. I don't care what you pick. Then all these ideas, you're going to evade the brain in a fluid that's different from the bloodstream separate from the bloodstream. That's happening at your epithalamus. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, thou shalt learn the flow of the CSF. CCC that. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to walk through how you get CSF from your epithalamus to where it's supposed to go. Understand this. You first have to understand this picture here. What in the world is this? The ventricles. Ventricles. Very good. What are ventricles? Openings or spaces. And where are they in this picture? Mm -hmm. is the brain, right? Right, so if you kind of visualize, they're inside your brain. You want to think of your brain as being hollow, it kind of is. Right? Or a tennis ball kind of thing. So inside your brain, you have these big empty spaces they call ventricles. What, what, should you, what should you put in those big empty spaces? Fluid. What fluid would you put in there? Say E. Yeah. CSF. So I'm going to show you this picture now here. Doesn't it also help with buoyancy so it your does. weight doesn't? Yeah, so your brain basically is weightless. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a diagram showing how we're using these ventricles and the epithalamus to make the fluid. So this red goop here, this is your epithalamus slash choroid plexus slash ependymal cells. And they're located in the very center of your brain. And in the center of your brain, there are some ventricles there. So we're going to make a flow chart as we walk from the epithalamus through these ventricles. We'll leave lots of space. Yeah. All those that's in the middle of the brain, are 